Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from Gadigal Land. This is ABC News Daily. The voice to Parliament is on track to be defeated at a referendum. That's according to a string of opinion polls. So how is the No campaign and the federal opposition managing to cut through so successfully? Today, host of Radio National Breakfast and the Party Room podcast, Patricia Carvelis, on the tricky position the government's found itself in, why it won't back out of a vote now. PK, it was a year ago at the Gama Festival that the then newly elected Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, confirmed he'd be proceeding with a referendum on an Indigenous voice to Parliament. You were there then. Yeah, it was certainly a very key moment in the evolution of the process Mm -hmm. towards this referendum. And he was really passionate about Mm. it. Today I reaffirm my government's solemn promise to implement the Uluru Statement from the Heart in full. And he said that this would be a reform that every Australian would embrace. And at that stage, to be clear, it was hoped that there would be bipartisanship for The Voice. Enshrining a voice will be a national achievement. It will be above politics. A unifying Australian moment. And I think there was a very different mood to the one we're in right now. Yeah, okay, things have changed a lot. And you were there again at the Gama Festival on the weekend, a year on, where the Prime Minister reaffirmed his commitment to the voice referendum. This referendum is about recognition, but it's also about listening in order to achieve better results. That's all. That's all. How did that go down this time? It went down really well. Yeah. And there's a reason for that. At this festival, that these people, they live in reality. They've seen the polling. They know that this is uh, this is going down a, a difficult trajectory, but they are very firm that they've waited long enough and that they want to take it to the people. And so when the Prime Minister looked them in the eye, as he did in his speech, and said there will be no delays, there will be no putting this off, he's going to take it to the people in the, in the last quarter of the year, it was really warmly welcomed because... They think if if not now, then, then they won't get another chance, that this is their one shot in the locker and they want to take it. So, PK, a year since he announced Australians would be heading to a referendum to vote on whether we should enshrine in the Constitution a voice to Parliament, which would act as an independent advisory body for First Nations people... The debate is not going how the Prime Minister had hoped, far from it. No, that's right. I think if you look at the trajectory of those opinion polls, and it's Mm. a range of opinion polls, not just one, it is quite clear that the no vote has been gaining traction. Another poll shows the no case extending its lead, now ahead 56 to 44%. It continues the trend in the ABC's polling average. Look, you know what? No vote has been taken yet. No one's actually got their little pencil out. So there is actually still a campaign to be fought. But you you ask me a specific question. It's not going the way the Prime Minister wanted. No. The no campaign's lines have been getting traction. Mm. And I think that they have sowed doubt in the community about this. And I think that's because the political debate has been really, really uh, fractured and quite vicious and quite divisive. Mm. And some of the rhetoric has been resonating with people. Yeah, of course. And of course, we know in this country that the polls can be wrong. So let's look at why it is, PK, that people at this stage are more likely to vote no. I give the call to the Honourable, the the Leader of the Opposition. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. In the past fortnight, in question time, the Coalition has really been suggesting that the Prime Minister is tricking the Australian people, that he's not being honest with the Australian people about what he ultimately wants. Why does the Prime Minister continue to be deceptive and not provide the information Order. millions of Australians are asking for? Order. 
This goes to the Uluru Statement, which has three parts, voice, treaty and truth. The government, PK, only really wants to be talking about the voice, but the coalition says it's being tricky because it's really after treaty and truth. What's the tactic of the coalition here, PK? Because it does get a little confusing. It's it's really complicated. Yeah. So uh, on the question of whether the Prime Minister is being tricky, well, no, I don't think he's being tricky, but I do think he is quite clearly avoiding mm-hmm. making statements that shift the debate onto different territory. What I'm saying is that what the No campaign want to do is to focus on everything that's not happening and nothing that is. What, what so he's made a political decision that makes him look evasive. Mm. I know, I interviewed him and I think he seemed evasive when I was pushing him on the other elements of the Uluru Statement mm-hmm. and I thought they were relevant questions. Truth. Do you support a treaty, Prime Minister? Uh, look, what is before uh, the Australian people uh, is uh, a referendum uh, which is about voice, which is uh, the first part of the Uluru Statement from the heart. But is it tricky? Well, the government has always said it supports the Uluru Statement with all its detail, which is voice, treaty, truth. They're the three elements. So what the opposition has been doing is trying to tease out the other elements to try and, I think, muddy the waters, get people confused about the other elements. I think it is a political strategy of theirs. On 34 occasions, the Prime Minister told Australians He was committed to implementing the Uluru Statement in full, which includes a treaty. When will we hear a straight word? Treaty seems scarier to people, Mm. for whatever reason, than perhaps a voice. Makarata sounds like an overwhelming word. It's just a Yolnu word that means uh, coming together after a conflict, which is really what we are trying to do. Let's not pretend that colonisation was a sort of nice and fair settlement. Okay, so the Uluru Statement, within that, there's the voice, which we will go to a referendum to vote on. There is then treaty or makarata and truth. And the coalition argues the government wants to shift towards a makarata commission to work on a national process of treaty making and truth telling very quickly after the referendum. And it says the government's been tricky about that. That's its argument. The opposition has been trying to tease out what I think are facts. The government has committed to these other elements. That is true. The government has been avoiding going into this territory because it just wants to talk about the constitution, which is the first stage of any reform. So I understand why the Prime Minister has been reluctant, but equally, once you commit to the full Uluru Statement like he has, you kind of can't not kind of confirm it again because it does look tricky. Yeah, so truth-telling is about our history. It's about telling the truth of what happened in our history. Just the truth, no embellishment, just the truth. All right, the No campaign and the coalition are also seeding doubt about making the voice permanent by putting it in the constitution. Are we clear, PK, on whether the coalition does in fact support legislating the voice as long as it's not locked in? Not clear at all. Uh huh. Clear as mud. Uh. I spoke to the Liberal frontbencher Dan Tian on Radio National Breakfast, and I thought it was important to find out what is your policy. What is the policy of an alternative government? Your policy is that Indigenous voices should make representations to the government about policy that affects them, right? Well, our our policy is that what we need to be doing is making sure that we're engaging with local communities now. He wasn't clear about whether the policy is to have a legislated national voice, although he said he does think there should be legislated local and regional voices, but he's against constitutionally enshrined voice to Parliament. Mm -hmm. So you work it out. I don't know. It depends who you interview. Yeah, it's it's very confusing. All right. So this has become, PK, incredibly political. And the Prime Minister, judging by the polls, is clearly not cutting through with his yes message. Well, he's in a tricky position and now I'll put my political hat on. Prime Minister is in a wicked position in some ways. If he talks about this all the time, people, well, I think might get cranky because there's lots of other problems in the country that involve the fact that they have less money in their pocket to spend on groceries and petrol. And he knows that. He's really aware of that. And that's why his treasurer has been really doing a lot of the heavy lifting on talking about that. But equally, 
you know, he does actually believe that this idea matters and wants to deliver for Indigenous Australians and so he wants to lean into it too. In terms of his message, well, the truth is it is always harder to argue for change than the status quo, right? This idea in its genesis was meant to be a simple idea, mm-hmm. but if you look at some of some of the language around it, it's become a lot more than that, hasn't it, um, with questions around its ramifications. Mm. So I, I, I do think they need a sharper line on some of this. I don't know what that sharper line is. I'm not a political activist or strategist, mm. but I analyse and I think it, they're, clearly their lines are not cutting through and some of the no lines are. I don't think the Yes campaign's been landing many blows on the No campaign. You asked Indigenous Australians Minister Linda Burney this week whether it was worth actually proceeding to a vote if it's going to fail. What did she say? Uh, She said yes, and the language I used it before, I was paraphrasing her, was, you know, it's one shot in the locker. Uh, The momentum that I feel... Uh, is not reflected in the polls. Everywhere I go, I feel the momentum. She sees it as our only chance as a nation. She is making the case that it will make a practical difference to Indigenous Australians. I mean, Patricia, it is not right that my life expectancy and your life expectancy is eight years different. Uh, It is not right that babies are not born at a healthy birth weight. It is not right... Uh, that our young men have more of a chance of going to jail than to university. Uh, What we do know is that what's currently being tried has not worked. So the argument is, why wouldn't you try something different? Well, that's what the Yes campaign says, but let's let's not just fall for every line. Uh, We don't know it would work. So the case she makes is based on the idea that it would work. Her evidence for that is that when Indigenous Australians do design their own policies, and we have had some evidence of when they have, when they've been given the sort of driver's keys, if you like, right, that they've had more success than bureaucrats or governments doing it. So, PK, the question is then, if the referendum fails and the Prime Minister does not get this unifying moment he had hoped for, What does that actually mean for addressing Indigenous disadvantage? I don't think we know. No. What next, right? Mm. Do you legislate a body? What other uh, elements do you work on? I, I don't think we know. And that's because the government's view is that they've got to go for gold, if you like, and try and get a yes vote up. What I do know based on history and, you know, my own sort of work on these issues for such a long period of time is that you don't really get another constitutional chance. I don't think you'll get another chance at a vote, at a general big referendum election beyond this. I do not think that will happen. Patricia Carvelis is the host of Radio National Breakfast and the Party Room podcast. It's expected the Prime Minister will hold the referendum for a voice to Parliament in mid-October. This episode was produced by Nell Whitehead and Sam Dunn, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is David Cody. I'm Sam Hawley. To get in touch with the team, please email us on ABC News Daily at abc.net.au. Thanks for listening. <laughs>